Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my version of Tesla's through the earth radiant electricity transmitter. Um, and with the added bonus of making it solar, solar rechargeable, solar controllable. So I've got a few things here that I would like to mention. And why would why would this be even something that you consider? Because uh, you can run two forty volt lights, or uh, with modifications to the secondary coil, you can run uh, one ten volt lights. So it would probably just burn it out with uh, the current setup. It'll burn out a one ten volt light. So uh, you will need to make the adjustments. I'm making a new coil at the moment for those people that are on that one ten system. Um, as a lot of my viewers are in that position. So uh, make sure that I accommodate for everyone. So that light there is a five or four watt LED. Um, it's currently not um, full brightness there, but uh, that's because um, I'm sending power back to the source. Now, everyone constantly wants to see that a system can feed back to the source. And um, initially, that was my main goal as well. But after playing with this stuff for a while, you start to realize some things. It's just more economical, smarter to charge a second battery than it is to feed back to the source. Um, there's just some funny things that I'll be honest, don't completely understand, but there is more power to be gained by feeding an external battery than there is to be you know, feeding back to the source. There's very little benefit from what I can see feeding back to the source, whereas if you feed that external or secondary battery, you will have a significant difference. Now, I will put the schematics up. So don't stress yourself if, if you're looking at it going, well, what the hell is that? Um, I completely understand. So we have my circuit, which again, um, schematics at the end, but you can check out my other videos and I have a tutorial. Um, main reason why you would want to do this if you're off grid or you want to send a light uh, or operate a light over a long distance. So uh, I don't know the full distance that this is limited to. I have tested it at about 160 meters through the earth. And whilst the power draw increases, it is not very much. So it's still an extremely efficient light. So, um, and that's not at full brightness there. I'll show you full brightness in a second. But for whatever brightness that is, that is consuming... 4.4 watts okay to run that uh, one light at probably probably around about 60 percent um, and so I know you might be thinking straight away well that's more than what the lights rated but if you're off grid you would be aware of the fact that to run that light, you would require an inverter. That's an off-the-shelf light. Um, no modifications made to that. That's that one there. So I used to live off-grid, and that was one of the biggest things that used to annoy me is that the inverter just running was chewing more power than it needed, and that was one of the reasons why I started investigating these alternate circuits that could run these lights straight from the shop without modification. So 4.4 4 watts, we'll call that. Um, and so adding in the solar controller is an added bonus because you can protect your batteries this way as well. This one has uh, an adjustment for um, 
uh, time so I can place the light on a time delay when the Sun goes down the light automatically turns on and if you're running it through the earth that's very convenient because you can put the solar panels out where you get good sunlight and then use the, um, the through earth transmission to get you a long distance so um, so we've got I've got it connected up through Tesla's patent there um, which I'll put the number for and that goes into this 1400 volt DC 20 UF capacitor and then those two yellow leads there feed back to earth oh, sorry back to the battery so we can take off if we take off the positive um, you'll see there's if I do that when I'm actually focused on the bulb so if I remove the positive that comes from the capacitor again refer to the schematics um, then we'll see a small increase in brightness not a lot and it's definitely not at a hundred percent brightness now that is removing the positive side from the capacitor and I want to just point that out because there are differences between each side and you would question why um, and I don't completely understand why but you will see there's such a massive difference uh, that it's worth paying attention so that increase now that we're not feeding back doesn't seem to be much of an increase if at all I was pretty sure yeah I did see 0.5 there so there's a perhaps a tiny tiny increase um, so we've got that now I'll show you the difference if I put that positive back on we'll get a little bit of a discharge there and the capacitor fills up to uh, I believe 40 volts yeah so that cap gets to 40 volts now we'll put the positive back on and that drops it down to the 13 volts of the battery uh, well just above the battery voltage which is 12.7 so if we take off the negative to the capacitor and we'll watch the light while we do that and we'll see the difference there it just gets like intensely bright and the camera I was just watching that on the camera then doesn't do it any justice we get a massive discharge on the capacitor when that uh, is reconnected and you can see the difference in lighting there and it just seems to increase and then it just intensifies at a maximum you know, brightness which is clearly uh, full brightness of that and what does that consume a little bit more so you're looking around the five five point one so a tiny bit more but a massive increase in brightness so uh, feeding back to source we've got a somewhat diminished light if you don't feed back to source a very intense light okay a very quick recharge rate on a capacitor right now why is that the in my opinion it's because of earth number two earth number two in relation to my circuit facilitates the through earth transmission uh, so we've got high voltage line coming out of the center of the coil down in there connected to the terminal and that runs over to that light that light then runs to ground so when I add in earth number two which 
to my normal circuit, I can add that to any point in my circuit. I can add that to the positive, I can add it to negative, wherever I want. Um, however, there are differences. So for example, we've seen what happens if I add that to the negative where it just was, and we get these big discharges when the negative is removed, right? We don't get the same big discharges when the positive is removed. We only get very small ones, right? Now, if we transfer this negative line to facilitate my circuits through earth design, and we place that back on the positive, we can see that still works. But now if we remove the negative going back to the source battery, we don't get anywhere near the same type of discharge. The light doesn't get anywhere near as bright as when it is when second earth or earth number two is on the negative. We place that back there. We see straight away that's a good uh, demonstration of the difference. So positive, earth number two on a positive, earth number two on negative. Right, so we don't need to discuss that anymore. That's bloody obvious. So there are differences. And all the little things that you do, um, you wouldn't think that that would be a case and you probably won't find that in a textbook. And so this is why people just unfortunately need to stop reading and start doing, uh, start building stuff. Okay, so there's one other thing I uh, was interested in uh, in relation to my circuit. If I'm feeding back to source, you can see this little LED down here, which is just one of my coils, and they're a one watt LED. But if I place that anywhere near the input line, so you can see we've got a positive and a negative, and both of those are input lines coming from the battery. They run through the meter, through the controller, solar controller, onto the battery okay so now when I noticed I place that coil there and you get that effect and I've known about that for a while why doesn't that coil work when I place it in the same position it doesn't work like this one does and the coils working so I place that there so you can see coils working but it doesn't work there this one works there and this one works there. This one works there. This one doesn't work there. So why is that? The one that works here has nothing special done to it. It's the same components, same capacitor, same winding, same number of turns, same wire. The difference is that this LED is facing the other way. So negative at this side, positive on this side. On the other coils, it's the other way around. The LED is even facing the same way, but it's spun around. Positive on one side, negative on the other. So there are ways. Now that probably shouldn't make a difference but it does and that means that this coil can now harness energy from the input without the input increasing another interesting thing that I've found now they, as I said these are one watt LEDs so they they require a decent obviously the one watt to make them functional and they're at full brightness now one would just naturally assume if I go adding extra coils that consume one watt each and I add four of them in, then we should see an increase in power. But it's not relative. It's not the correct uh, increase amount. So if we notice there, we've got with no extra coils, we have 4.4 
I think last time we noted 4.5. Now we'll place one of these coils in the sweet spot. 4.4, 4.3. Well, that's not right because that's consuming a watt. Okay, let's add in a second one. 4.4. Ooh, 4.5. But that is not relative. It doesn't make sense. That should not be such a small increase if it can at all be seen. Let's add in a, in a third one. So now we've got three extra watts being pulled from the system. They're all full brightness. All right. Three extra watts. And not a relative increase. Let's go four watts. Let's move this one around. Put an extra one there. Now we've got four watts drawing from that coil and what's our increase there yeah I think people were lied to and I think this is why they don't teach this stuff because maybe you should just go and work your ass off to get that and maybe they don't want you to know but anyway, that's just interesting stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. It's very important that you show someone this. Even if you don't understand it, be the bigger person. Show the person who does understand it. Maybe we can get somewhere together. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.